There are loads of ways to remove blank rows and columns inside Excel. We could use the go to special method or maybe the filter method. The problem with those is that we have to do them manually every time we want to do it. So therefore many of us might turn to Power Query. The problem with that is that we have to change our original data set into a table and then we have to click refresh. Wouldn't it be nice if there were a better way, a way that updated automatically? Well, that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here on the left, we have the data that we are working with. And as you can see, we have blank rows and blank columns that we want to remove. So let's write a formula that will remove this automatically. I'll start in cell I3. I'll type equals let opening bracket. Let is a function that allows us to allocate names to interim calculations. And then we can use those names later on in our calculation. I'll press Alt and Enter to create a new line. The first name that we want to create is Array. And this is going to refer to our range from B3 down to G18. I'll enter a comma and press Alt Enter to create another new line. The first thing we want to do is to find out which cells in that array are blank. I'll call the name is blank. And then we're going to use the is blank function and we want to check for our array. I'll then close that bracket, enter a comma and press Alt and Enter to create a new line. Now let's suggest that we just want to output our is blank. So I will return that as my final argument for the let function. When we close that bracket and calculate, we now get an array that displays true or false. If the value is true, it means that that cell is blank. Now let's head back to our formula and we're going to add a new calculation. That calculation is called blank row. And we're going to use the by row function. So for each row, we want to check whether the result of is blank and we want to check whether all those results are blank. So we're going to use the AND function. So this means Excel will return true if the entire row is blank. So let's return that result. I'll enter that as the last argument. Blank row. And now that displays true if the entire row is blank. So you can see there that we have three blank rows. Let's edit our formula once more. And we're going to add a new name. And that name is going to be result. And for that, we want to filter our array. Now filter works based on a true or false value so that it only returns the values that are true. The result of blank row shows true if the row is blank. So we need to reverse that value, which means we can use the not function with the result of our blank row. And then close that not and close the filter. If we now return that result name, we now get our data with all of the blank rows removed. We still have the blank columns and they are currently displayed as zeros. So let's go and remove those. I'll edit the formula once more and we're going to add a new name called blank col. And this is going to use the by col function. Again, we want to use our is blank result and we also want to use the and function. So this will check whether all the values in that column are blank. Next, we're going to filter our existing filter result. So we're going to add another filter. And for this filter, the include argument will be where we use the not function again, and we want to use blank col as the values that we filter based on. We can then close that filter. And when we calculate, it now removes the blank rows, but also the blank columns. So that is how we can create a formula that removes blank rows, but also blank columns. Now we can take this a step further by creating our own reusable custom function to do this on any workbook. So let's go and take a look at how we do that. To create a reusable custom function, we use the Lambda function. So I'll come to the start of my formula and we're going to enter Lambda. Now our custom function only has one argument and that is the array or range of cells that we want to remove the blank rows or blank columns from. 
Therefore, I'm going to call that argument array. I'll then create a new line. Now in our let function, we've already created a name called array. We don't want to declare it twice. So therefore we want to remove the array that exists inside the let function. That means anytime we want to use our custom function, we need to pass in that array argument. I can now close this formula at the end. Let's test to see if this still gives us the same result. So in brackets afterwards, I can select the same range as we used before, B3 to G18. I'll close that bracket and calculate, and that still gives us exactly the same result. Let's go and change this into a custom function. So we will edit our formula, and we want to select everything in that formula, but not the test brackets at the end. I'll press Ctrl and C to copy the code. Then we can go to formulas and then define name. In here, we're going to call this remove blanks. That will be the name of our function. And in the refers to box, I'll press Control V to paste the code that we previously copied. Then we can click OK, and that creates our custom function. So I'll press delete to remove our formula, and then in cell I3, I'll type equals and start typing remove blanks. You can see that appears in the IntelliSense. I'll press tab to accept that. We can see that it requires one argument, which is array. I will select all of those cells, close that bracket and calculate. And that gives us exactly the same result using a custom function. And we can easily copy and paste this custom function between other workbooks. This all works fine when we can explicitly select the range of cells that we want to remove the rows and columns from. But what happens if we copy and paste some data into Excel and we want that to automatically remove the rows and the columns? Well, we can do that too. Here in our example file, we have a worksheet that contains all the data that we might have copied and pasted from another workbook. And we want to automatically remove the rows or the columns from whatever we have pasted into this worksheet. But let's use our custom function. In cell N3, type equals remove. We can see our custom function. Now we can't select the entire worksheet. If we were to, it would take a very long time to calculate. Or even worse, Excel could run out of memory. So that means we need to use the new trim range function. Trim range reduces down an entire range to the range of used cells. We can now come to our worksheet select the entire worksheet, close that bracket for the trim range, close the bracket for the array, and then calculate. And that now gives us everything from that worksheet. As you can see, we have our header row of full range. So let's edit our formula. We'll add the drop function, and we want to drop the first row. So when that calculates, we now get all the data from that worksheet. But what happens if we have more data that we want to copy and paste across? I'm going to select all of the cells from this worksheet and then come back to our previous worksheet. I'm now going to paste all of those values. When we look at our formula, you can see it automatically expands to include the new data. Now, if you want to understand how to build these kind of formulas yourself, if you want to master dynamic arrays, then we have a course just for you. It's called Dynamic Formulas Unleashed, and it contains everything you need to master dynamic array and lambda calculations inside Excel. Just head over to excel3grid.com and check it out. And once you've done that, here's another video I think you'll enjoy. It contains lots more advanced array techniques. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.